What is up everyone? Welcome back to Investing Club. And in this video, we're going to be talking about Uber and what California's court case ruling on Uber's drivers means for the future of Uber's business. So this is basically what's been happening with Uber. Throughout their history, Uber drivers have always been classified as independent contractors. And what that means is they don't get a lot of the benefits that normal employees do. They don't get things like health care and unemployment insurance. And what this does is saves Uber a ton of expenses that they would have to pay of insurance and health care. But the latest thing that happened was the court had a ruling that it was unconstitutional for companies like Uber and Lyft to classify their drivers as independent contractors. Instead, they would have to be classified as full-time or part-time employees, and because of that, Uber would be on the hook to pay for all of these extra expenses associated with having instead of independent contractors. So that's what's going on with the company around. In my opinion, this is a huge deal because the entirety of a business model like Uber depends on how cheaply you can get someone from point A to point B. And if the drivers are suddenly classified as employees, that's gonna become a lot more expensive for Uber. So as of right now, both companies have said that if this were to go through and Uber has to start classifying their their drivers as full-time employees, they'd suspend their service in the state of California. And if they ever returned, it would only have a fraction of the drivers that they did before, and that would lead to things like higher costs and schedules that are less flexible. And so Uber having to pull out of a situation like this is no surprise to me, where they're already burning so much cash, if they had to do this, there's literally no future for the company. That's why this ruling is so monumental, because if it does become law, then Uber's literally better off not even operating in the state of California, which is one of the largest states in terms of Uber's revenue. And the companies have been doing everything they can to try to get around this. Like they've each, Uber and Lyft have each poured 30 million into a ballot measure, which would exempt the drivers from employee classification. And so the reason they care so much about this, the reason that even though they're losing billions of dollars a year, they're still putting millions towards a ballot measure because they know that the future of the company depends on how much they have to pay their drivers. So if we take a look at Uber's income statement and we take a look at what their net income looks like this company hasn't been consistently profitable they did come out with a 997 million profit in 2018 but this past year they took a massive loss of over 8 billion so these losses just keep adding up as they're do trying to do things to expand their business like making acquisitions like postmates uh, expanding their services like uber eats where all of these things are just costs going out and so far they haven't received any of that investment back in the form of profits now what their hope is is that over time they will start to become profitable from those ventures but right now to me it's a huge toss-up if any of these will will become profitable anytime in the near future so uber originally had a plan to become break even in ebitda by 2021 ebitda is earnings before you take all the stuff out so earnings before things like interest taxes depreciation and amortization this is one of the most optimistic ways to look at earnings and uber planned to be break even in the most optimistic way to look at earnings by 2021 but now obviously those plans are thrown out the window with the shutdown and pandemic we just had obviously there's no chance that uber does this their ride bookings are down just around 75 percent and the company's best chance of becoming profitable is through their ride sharing it's not through uber eats even though that segment has been picking up a lot, that's not really going to be the money maker for Uber going forward. It's going to be their ride sharing business. And travel, especially in that shorter range, the 1 to 25 mile range, which is mostly used for Uber rides, is hasn't really been recovering as much as other forms of travel. So here's the chart of travel trends. And that, again, that 1 to 25 mile range, that really is the sweet spot for Uber rides. Not really much recovery from the month of June until now. So again, not too encouraging for Uber who really depends on travel demand starting to pick back up. So now we get to the Uber Eats part of the business. And Uber Eats has been the saving grace for Uber because even though their rides have been way down, the food delivery orders have skyrocketed as people have stayed home. Now in terms of the market share for meal deliveries, Uber Eats still has a pretty small percentage of the overall meal delivery market. Where you see from the chart, Uber Eats had 20% of the sales and Postmates, which Uber just acquired, has another 10%. So altogether, Uber and Uber Eats makes up for around 30% of the meal delivery market. And that's not even the market leader. If you look at companies like DoorDash has a 39% market share, and then you have Grubhub, which is also 30%. So it's pretty evenly spread right now, the market share between these companies. And the biggest reason why Uber Eats isn't a big deal, as many people say it is, is because Uber Eats is essentially just a commodity business. All they're doing is taking food from one spot and delivering it to another spot. 
And so I'm not a big fan of commodity businesses because there's no opportunity to build out that big moat around the business that will allow them to keep growing their profits. So when you have Uber Eats, but you also have competitors like DoorDash and Grubhub, what's the differing factor between those three companies? All of them are going to be extremely similar in terms of the customer experience, but the thing people are going to take most into account is just the price. Which of these services will deliver my food the cheapest to me? And so in an industry like that, the margins are going to get crushed, and most of these businesses are just going to be losing money pretty consistently, as it's going to be hard to justify a way to charge more for your services to bring in higher margins. So Uber has been trying to take up more of the market share. They just acquired Postmates. Maybe they try to go after one of these other companies too, and if they did control a larger part of the meal delivery market, that's when they could start raising their prices. But right now, this is still a highly competitive market with no real room for earnings growth, in my opinion. So here's a chart of the monthly sales for meal delivery. Obviously, they've spiked up over the last few months. But like I said, even though this is a huge increase in sales, it doesn't necessarily flow down to income, which is what ultimately matters for a company. In fact, in the short run, this is likely to cause even more expenses for Uber as they do things like try to offer deals to incentivize users to try Uber Eats and other promotional offers. That's been one of Uber's go-to strategies where they just flood the market with free passes and offers for free rides. And doing this will build up their customer base, but it's going to burn a huge amount of cash in the process. So like I just said, Uber Eats part of the business is not really making any impact on the EBITDA. And that's what the management is most focused on right now. If you take a look at this graphic, this is management's path to profitability by 2021. And so obviously at this point, this is very unlikely with the type of economy we're in right now. And especially the damage that's been done to Uber's ride sharing business, very unlikely that they'll be EBITDA profitable by 2021. And if you notice what some of the bullet points are, invest in high margin and sustainable low cost products, well, Uber Eats is the exact opposite of that. They're low margin and high cost. And because of that, the biggest driver of their growth would be the ride sharing part of the business, even though that's the part that has been suffering the most over the past few months. And with the deal that we saw Uber buying out Postmates for 2.65 billion, they did this with all cash. They, they, they financed this deal with stock. It was an all stock deal. And so what that means is that Uber diluted their own stock in order to buy Postmates. And so if you're a shareholder of Uber, that's something for you to weigh the pros and the cons. Do you think that this dilution of shares by 2.65 billion is enough to justify the benefit that Postmates will bring you? And in my opinion, I'm not really sure. Obviously in the long-term plan of Uber, it makes sense to try to consolidate as much as the meal delivery business as possible. But to me right now, it's very unclear if this acquisition will pay off. So that's really it for what I have to say about Uber. I got some questions about it and what this law will mean for the company. So that's just sort of my thoughts. Um, you know, if you ask me where this company will be in 10 years, I don't really know. It's, it's a toss up. You know, I don't really know. In my opinion, it's not clear what direction this business will head in and if they will become profitable any time in the next few years. And so because of that, this is a company that I'm staying away from, not the type of company that I like to invest in. But I'm not saying it's impossible to make money by investing in Uber. Maybe in a few years, they will really cut their expenses and become profitable. But just know what all the risks are when you invest in a company like Uber, where there's so many uncertainties, not only with the demand for the business, but even with the legal aspects of actually running their business, there's just a lot of risks for a company like Uber right now. And based on the share price of the company and those risks, this is a company I would definitely not be comfortable putting my money into at this time. So let me know what you think about Uber, if you own Uber or Lyft stock, and if you think this new law being passed in California will be a big deal for the company. I'd love to hear what you all have to think. You know, if you like this video, do me a huge favor and hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already to see more videos just like this one, and hit the bell icon so you get notified whenever I upload a new video. And with that, I hope to see you on the next one.